Okay guys, we're back to transmission. I was able to get it all welded up and replace the springs. Got everything buttoned up. So we're gonna get these old gaskets off and start reassembling this 81 Y Glide. I'm gonna scrape off this 40 year old gasket with the razor blade and not gouge any of the metal or stab myself with the razor blade. So I was able to take this top over to my buddy Larry at Larry's Custom Cycles and we were able to build a little makeshift jig to hold it and re-weld the assembly. And I don't know what caused it other than hopefully just age and fatigue because nothing inside the box looks bad. So we're going to put it together and then run everything through the gears and make sure everything shifts appropriately before we put the primary and all that back on. And it was good because I had to get up there anyway. I got the new rubber boots for the battery or for the oil box. I got the transmission fluid. I got the oil for the machine itself primary gaskets this gasket the other gasket so caught him on a good day he had time to help me weld this up and then picked up all the stuff i needed to finish this up as well as a new battery because this battery on this machine is i don't know if it'll even hold a charge i know it was bone dead when i got here and it's just old and tattered so i talked my client into spending the 100 bucks put a new battery in it can't hurt all right we're getting close here so once I get the majority of this scraped off, I'll take it out with a wire brush and just clean up that mating surface a little bit and spray everything out with some good engine degreaser, carb cleaner, I don't know, whatever I got here. We're still working on everything. We got the mating surface and new gasket ready to go in in here. We got our little top hats so we don't forget to get those back in. And we're putting new gaskets and gonna try and get this top back on here today. So we've got our new gasket for here. Got our top all cleaned up. All right, so make sure we get the right bolts and the right holes with a little bit of blue Loctite. I don't like using red unless I have to. You know, Loctite is a biker's best friend and I couldn't find one of my drawers I have the gel flavored Loctite and boy I really like that so you can get it in any of the colors like normal but it's gel so it doesn't run all over everywhere it's pretty cool stuff okay so moment of truth it appears that we're gonna be okay so I gotta put this locking dog back in here with the springs we're gonna associate this at neutral right there and if we did that right, we should be able to keep that at neutral. All right, before we bend the lock tabs over, we're gonna see where we're at. Okay, so there's fourth gear. Third, second, first, neutral. Neutral, okay. Game on, we're pretty close. Okay, so we're putting the bolts back in, a little bit of Loctite on them, and we should have all our gears shifting like it's supposed to. We got this all back together, all the linkage cleaned up. I do need to grease that Zerk, and I'm gonna take some of that slop out. I'm gonna adjust this arm out just a little tighter. To take some of that, and I've gotta grease it, but you can see I'm all cleaned up. Went ahead and replaced the springs inside the top. Had the plate welded on, which is kind of your, like your drum plate, your shifter gear plate. We've got Got all new rubber boots for the oil bag so we're kind of in the uh take it back together stage we're going to put the oil bag back in and the new battery so this one was completely broken when i took it apart so the oil bag was bouncing off of it which is kind of common for these they're just a little piece of rubber vulcanized around two threaded washers and they're notorious for going bad in fact, I'm probably gonna have to find a couple bolts and put on there and let's see if I can find one of these, one extension. So what I'll do is I'll put this bolt on here and then I'll put that on there and hopefully it'll twist. Once it bottoms out, it should twist the whole rubber and everything. There it goes. Okay, so I just wanted to get that one on so that it's ready for my oil bag. Now I need to thread my clutch cable back through here. Try and do all the stuff that you don't want to fight with after the fact. And we want to make sure that none of these wires are in the way. And for a rough start, when I took this apart, I just barely cracked the lock nut on this washer, on this adjustment. If you look, this long thread goes in and out, and that's how you adjust the tension on your clutch arm. 
And my hope by doing that is that if I just take this right back to where it was, then when I put it back together, the adjusting of the clutch ought to be minimal. That's not to say it won't need adjusted because they do anytime you take them all the way down, but typically that'll get us in the ballpark. Then we'll lock that down right there with a 9 16th wrench. Oop. If I grab the 9 16th instead of the 5 8 will be gold okay and i'm just snugging that i'm not going to mean muscle it because probably i have to loosen it and adjust it but there's our clutch rod movement when you pull the clutch lever you can see that movement right there that shaft moving that's what engages and disengages the clutch and we've got oh yeah so i've got probably a half inch here which is way ample enough for what we need so everything underneath here is done i don't want to lose my starter i did get my o-ring for the primary here i already put a new seal on the back of the primary i've got my new primary gasket yeah here's a good picture for you guys look at how gnarled up that is see that rubber it's crunchy it's broken that's why I replace that stuff. It's funny, I, I used to not, back in my 20s when I was smoking and drinking and just trying to get bar to bar to bar on my bike, stuff like that wouldn't even phase me. I'd bolt it back in and head right back down the road. Trying to get a little better in my old age, far less maintenance if you take care of stuff the right way to begin with. Nice, clean, new one. So these are nylocks or nylon coated nuts, which I try and use on most stuff because they don't back out, but they're kind of a pain because as soon as that thread hits the nylon, you got to have a wrench. You can't finger tighten those in for anything. We're going to try and feed this in with the wire that's going to come back to the starter. Got to have that cable in there, but I'm not sure where she where she's going to land. Yeah, see that one's stripped out. All right, coming back out. What I'm gonna have to do is I have to put this rubber bumper on the frame first. And if you watched when I put the first bumper in the frame on, up by the clutch cable, it actually threaded into here. So I'll put a nut on it, but it doesn't really need it because it's threaded. So right here's the same bracket, but if you look at it, the threads are no more. So we're just going to have to back it with a nut. So now let's see if that oil bag will feed in the way it's supposed to. Bada boom, bada bing, baby. Well, see, you get a little wiggle and jiggle, but the whole thing's not bouncing around, so that's a good deal. So that's the oil bag in place, guys. So let's see, what's next? Let's see what this battery will do. Okay, so we got power there, we got power there, power there, and that's our ground. We have to make sure that's right. We got power coming up from the starter. We know that's right. So that's going to go over there, give or take. Oh, okay, so that's power feeding the main circuit board. So I could have, should have, would have fed this in before I set that battery in there. On both sides, it looks like. And honestly, I think that both of those are ground, but we're not sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just dry checking this. I want to check my lights. I want to check my neutral safety switch because I did get that plugged back in. So I'm making sure that doesn't touch anything metal. And this one, I'm not sure if it's hot or ground. I'm making sure it doesn't touch anything metal. And then we're going to do that number. So we've got neutral. Should have headlight. No headlight. Let's try that. I know it works. So now I'm going to disconnect that negative terminal. But we know more or less this side is right. One thing that's thrown me a little for a loop is no headlight. Because we should be ready to rock and roll there. Okay, so that's in. Now we're going to ground it. So I've got light here. High beam, low beam. On. Interesting. Well, I have to check that. So we're pretty close because I've got high beam and low beam here. So we'll figure that out. So our oil bag is in, minus a couple nuts. Our transmission's back together. So really, it's about time to put this inner primary in. Basically start the reverse procedure of putting it back together. What did I have here? Ah, one more gasket that has to go in there. So this guy, you can see that's nice and rubbery. It's a nice little rubber band O-ring. And that one is junk.
All right. That thing might actually not leak. <laughs> okay, so we're getting ready to put this back on. So I do have a new gasket for this. And these are just a, a peel and stick. So you peel and you stick. And if you can, it's always nice to put these on out here before you put the primary on. Now you watch, this is gonna cause me grief, but it should make it easier to not have to fight with everything if I do it here, because I can hold all this in one place instead of fighting from the backside. Okay. You know what? I think I'm fighting myself because I've got the wrong bolt. Those are too long. I should have a couple shorter bolts. Aha. There we go. Let's try this again. Got the spring. We got a new gasket. And all I got to do is find the threads. All right. So we got one started. Sometimes it's a little insignificant stuff that fights you tooth and nail. Okay, so where is, is that our flavor? No, it's the next bigger one. It's that one. Okay, almost there, almost there. Okay, there we go, guys. Ready to stick that inner in place and see what happens. Bada boom, bada bing. All right, so I can make sure I'm not painting myself into a corner here. So I can get my starter from the back side. I've got one starter bolt from this side. I can get my jack shaft through here. So yeah, I think we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and thread these bolts in there. And then I did clean this out, but of course we've been bouncing stuff around. So we're gonna get this bolted down tight and then Go back through and spray it all out, clean it up. Then we got to put our clutch basket and our compensating sprock and our primary chain all together. And we're gaining. We're not too far out from putting fluids in this thing and seeing if she'll fire. Stay tuned for more. Don't forget to kickstart that like button. So we got the primary going back together. Everything's cleaned up and freshened up. I do got to get some of the grease out of here, but I'll do that once we get her locked down. Actually, off camera, I had to do this twice. This front bolt was the leading edge of that first thread was a little boogered and I didn't want to risk stripping that because that goes right into your crankcase. So I took the whole primary off, cleaned up, sprayed a bunch of cleaner down inside there and very easily, gingerly, one little bit at a time, went ahead and uh, got that thread to clean up. Luckily, I didn't have to get out the tap or die or anything so we're in pretty good shape there and now we're going back together make sure we got our washers you always want washers behind everything especially when you've got steel studs with steel bolts on an aluminum case you know pretty much i always put a washer on everything i think you're crazy not to we got our nylock here and our washer for that all right, so there's that. Now we're looking for our sockets. We got a, there's a 916. Now I gotta find my half inch socket. All right, she sucked in tight. We're gonna do that one. And we're gonna do this one because these four tie into the transmission. So it should be good there. We can get this one up here for whatever reason. It's the only Allen key one. Okay. And we got this upper one. That was our problem child. Funny, there's always one problem child. And so far it was this bolt right here. One thing working on these 40, 50, 60, 70 year old Harleys. Sometimes just stepping back and breathing is your best plan of action because a guy can do a whole lot of damage by mean muscling one bolt into the hole wrong. You get something cross threaded, especially something that goes into the original cases that can cause a world of hurt. Okay, so these are nylocks. This is a nylock. The one that's not is this one up here and 
it has to be short because your chain runs here. So if you had one that stuck out like this, your chain would eat it. And if you look, it's hard to tell, but inside that nut head, there's a hole drilled all the way through that. So what you do is you put a piece of safety wire. Uh, it goes through there and you make a twist out of it and you tether it to this, which is actually, I think that came from the airline industry. Pretty much every nut and bolt on an airplane has to have safety wires on it. Uh, and that way, if it ever backs out, you don't chew it up and throw it into all the moving parts. Okay, so we're going to clean this mess up a little bit and call it a day. Tomorrow we're going to set the primary and probably be close to getting this thing back on the road. Thanks for watching. Kickstart that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, comment what you guys think. Let me know if you have any suggestions for video ideas or topics you guys want covered. And I'll do my best to include those in my next projects. You guys can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out the Beacons link in the description below. See you next time.